So, Krzysztof, in the last six months, you published two academic papers, eight or nine analytical pieces in popular science magazine. You co-authored a book. You've got three more academic papers you're working on this year. When previously, as far as I understand, you know, publishing just one paper was a struggle and you describe yourself as a reluctant writer, I think. So, I mean, that's a remarkable transformation. How did you do that? Like what changed for you specifically? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, I think the major difference for me at a very basic level was you know, to be part of a community and realize that I'm not the only one struggling and that, uh, in fact, therefore, there are a lot of people in a similar situation to mine who, who, who also struggle. And, and for me, I have to be honest, this, this uh, membership in the community was, was a huge motivating factor. And uh, for me, that was really important because I, I feel that as, as a social scientist, most of us, uh, I certainly feel that way, are very lonely. You know, we sit in our ivory towers and, 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 and do our things, but we don't really communicate with others and we don't really share both, you know, pains and, and victories. And so this, this community thing that, that you have built was incredibly inspiring and important aspect of, you know, this whole project. That, that you've created. I mean, this lack of community previously, I mean, how did that, I suppose, negatively affect the writing process for you? Very good question. How, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think I felt demotivated, discouraged. I felt detached, perhaps that's the right word, you know? At least for me, I mean, I'm this type of personality. I, you know, I get best ideas when I exchange views and when I get into interactions with other people and other scholars. And the nature of, of our work as, as academics is that we actually don't have that, very little of it at least. And so for me, that was, that was really the uh, decisive factor, you know, the most important variable, if you will. Mm -hmm. So how did you, I mean, how did you utilize that, that community, I suppose, or the or the coaching calls to, you know, to write more papers? Well, I followed, you know, I followed the, the guidelines. Once I joined the community, I really spent a lot of time reading all the guidelines and then, and especially the classroom, I found this incredibly useful. So I, I listened to everything. I took notes. I downloaded a lot of stuff. I'm sure I will use it for years to come. And, and of course, you know, every time I, I had a victory, a win, uh, as you call it, I posted it online and I had some very good feedback from other uh, members of the community and, and that was hugely motivating, hugely motivating. So actually I made it a, a habit to visit uh, the community every day and, and go through just quickly, of course, we're all very busy, but, you know, just spend a couple of minutes and, 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 and follow what's happening be up to date with, with, with the wins of others and, and congratulate them as well. It, it was hugely motivating. And, you know, you mentioned the, like the, the classroom materials, like how did they help you specifically? And what, I suppose, what did they give you? Cause I mean, you're already an experienced researcher who had published papers before. So how specifically did they help you? Well, uh, I have to be honest, uh, even though I am an established academic and, and a published academic at that. Most of the things that I've done or I had done before I uh, joined this community was kind of intuitive, you know. I never had a system in place and I never really understood what benefits of, of having a system would bring me. Part of the problem is, I guess, that, you know, when I was doing my PhD, PhD program looked very different than it looks now. I think today, uh, a lot of PhD programs and trainings all around the world are way better structured. When I was doing my PhD, there was basically no structure. And we simply proceeded by trying to, you know, copy our professors. Everything I had done before I joined the community was kind of try and error 
kind of approach, right? When I joined this community, and, and especially the classroom is so useful because there's so much structure there. And and finally, <laughs> finally, I was able to to get access to this, you know, structure and, and follow it in terms of research and publishing. And suddenly I realized that this is actually not so difficult, right? And that so it doesn't have to be trial and error. There is a certain system in place. And if you tap into it, you can really benefit a lot from it. So that the classroom materials, really the key for me, this is next to the community, the classroom materials, the most important aspect of all this platform. And can, can you maybe give an example of that system that you built for yourself, like maybe one specific kind of part or step in that system that you've, you know, you've managed to implement? Because I think for a lot of people, like for yourself, maybe in the past, it's not very clear what the benefit of a system would be and how it actually looks like in practice. And of course, we don't have time to go over the entire system, but maybe you know one part of it that's kind of you use regularly that helps you okay i'll speak about two the first one is uh the materials i find it super useful the materials uh that you've created about identifying research gap or research gaps uh because you know in the past with that the way I would choose my research project would be, I'll just kind of, you know, wander around and say, oh, this is interesting. Maybe I should look at this, you know? And then, of course, I would do the literature review and I would try to add some something that I thought was, you know, not there. But to be honest, I, I wasn't usually very aware of the actual research gaps in that particular discipline or sub. And, and that's the key thing, which is why I guess a lot of my papers have been rejected in the past because uh, I might be off target, as simple as that. And so the, the materials that you have created around identifying research gap and especially the uh, the foundations i found this super useful and the second thing which is much more technical when you there's the whole section uh, about how to use ai i found this also incredibly useful i wasn't really a good student when i was in my primary secondary school and the reason for that is that uh, i've got dyslexia okay so which means that I find it really difficult to read. Uh, and I've got this graph here, which means I make a lot of mistakes when I write. Thanks to the introduction to AI tools, which is an important component of the whole system that you've created, I was able to uh, finally free myself from the pain. It's really painful to, you know, when you dyslectic and dysgraphic, the, the actual physical um, aspect of reading and writing, to me, that has always been painful. And so now this is gone. Now writing is just pure pleasure because when I employ AI, some of the AI platforms that you also recommend, I can just focus on the pure pleasure of forming thoughts and, you know, thinking in abstract terms and generalizing. I, I don't get distracted with the, you know, physical uh, aspect of reading and writing. So in my case, this is incredibly, incredibly useful and, and, and helpful. And it has helped me to start enjoying the process of actually research and writing. Yeah, I remember in one of your posts or one of your wins in the community you specifically said that you started to actually enjoy writing where in the past you described yourself as a reluctant writer, which I think to me, you know, of course it's great that you're publishing papers and you're more productive, but that enjoyment that comes with the writing, I think that's that's something invaluable because if it's painful, I mean, you can try to do more of it, but ultimately it's going to be really, really difficult. And, and one yeah. last question I wanted to ask you as well, you, you mentioned before that you're, that you're very busy and you know yeah. as a as a professor you you have to teach i think four courses you serve as a master level program director so i mean how did you manage your time because i think that's a big issue as well that i suppose a lot of professors in your situation face you're evaluated based on the number and quality of your publications but there is no time to write these publications so what what changed for you and how did you establish a writing routine i suppose that's a very good question and and i you know i just wanted myself but i guess it it all boils down to this one fundamental aspect that once 
researching and writing is not painful anymore, then it's enjoyable, in fact. Then, you know, I don't, I don't have to plan my day and, and allocate specific hours for writing anymore. Because writing is, is now, I like doing it now, then I just, you know, I just use any moment I have. Okay, I've got 30 minutes. Okay, I sit down and write. Got one hour, fantastic. And so I use any time I have. And in fact, I have much more time than I thought I had. When writing was really painful and I was reluctant, I would usually find, uh, you know, a thousand excuses. I, oh, I have to do this first. And then I sit down and write, as you observed. And, and, and you talked about this in a lot of your uh, tutorials. That's true. That's really how it works. I mean, you know, you, you, you find uh, at least 10 things you got to do first before you sit down and write. And then once you complete those tasks, you're too tired to sit down and write. So I, I really um, turn things around by... Because now I enjoy writing. Writing is the first thing I do. Uh, and I look forward to it. And then everything else, you know, all the email stuff that takes a lot of time. You know, I, I live it to the end. Sometimes I don't even attend to this because then I'm too tired because of reading and writing, right? So, so but it's okay. This stuff can wait. It's really not that important. Uh, if I'm late uh, by one day responding to an email, so what? I mean, you know, it's not the end of the world. Any 30 minutes, any 20 minutes, 15 minutes, one hour, I just sit down and I, and I you know, keep keep writing yeah that that's the biggest difference really and and also it's very important you're right to make it a habit to to do it every day i mean to write every day every day i even sometimes now write on weekends which you know is something i never did before but now i just say here i am it's saturday but i've got nothing to do really Oh, maybe I just, you know, write another paragraph or two paragraphs every day, every day. That's uh, incredibly important, right? Why, why is it so important for you to write every day? Um, because then you progress really quickly. Say you're working on a paper on a research project or whatever, and, and you just do it once a week or, you know, once in a couple of days, then you, it becomes burdensome. But now I usually, I usually work on two uh, or even three papers at the same time. So I, I might spend 30 minutes on one and then I move on to another one, another 30 minutes, then I've got a break and I do something else and then maybe one hour with yet another project. In that way, I, I have become incredibly productive, you know, over just, so, so for me, it's, it's like a night and day uh, <laughs> difference. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's really amazing, amazing to hear, Krzysztof. So what's, what's next this year? I hear you want to publish more analytical pieces, a book. Yeah, well, um, okay. So uh, it's just actually, you know, the middle of, a, of, of an actual year, but it's the end of the academic year. Um, so what's next? Uh, if things go right, we will do another book with my research partner and I will continue writing those analytical pieces like one per month they are up to 3000 words and they are peer reviewed so you know it's not like not just writing for the sake of writing and i intend to do at least two more papers academic papers to submit to journals these are my plans but you know things i've noticed that things that i uh, i can't really predict they they happen as well and for example, uh, because of those analytical pieces that I really enjoy writing, and usually once it's it's published, I, I send links to you know colleagues, and two of them turned into fully fledged academic papers because someone said, "Oh, listen, we we're doing this, we're doing this edited volume, and maybe you know you can extend this into a full piece." And say, "Yeah, sure, why not?" So, who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> Amazing. Congratulations once again, uh, Krzysztof. And if those of you listening, if you'd like to take a peek at the at the system uh, that Krzysztof implemented, you can watch this next video in which I show you the four steps you can follow in order to start publishing in high impact journals more regularly.